Today I'm having a look at reed buntings. It might not seem a very exciting species compared to the others I've done recently, the, the buzzards and the uh, little room plovers and water rails, but it's the sort of thing I really enjoy doing. I've been to over 60 countries photographing the wildlife and I've always said I get more pleasure and satisfaction photographing common British birds than I do all the exotic wildlife. And I like to work out techniques and methods for photographing them. Now this is the perfect field for photographing reed buntings in. Why? Because there's no tall vegetation. There's a clump of bulrushes over there. There used to be about 15 bulrushes, now there's a couple of hundred, it's slowly spreading. But mostly the field is just made up of hard rush like this. There's a hedge all the way around it, so they do land on the top of the hedges, which is a disadvantage because it's too high and it's not very photogenic. But the territory is in the middle of the field and they do come and sing, but only low down in this, this hard rush. And all I've got to do is identify a place where they're coming down the most often, not pinpoint it precisely, but roughly know where they're coming down and then go and provide them with a perch that is slightly higher than the vegetation and there's a very good chance they will take to it. So I spend a lot of time just sitting in a field like this watching, which brings me to a vital bit of equipment that I use all of the time for this sort of work and that is my camping stool. You've got to have a camping stool in the car with you and uh, I spend a lot of time sitting on this. I often carry it around with me, just hook it over my shoulder because I know I'm going to sit here for half an hour, then I'm going to move over there 30 metres and sit for another half hour watching from a different angle. So you spend a lot of time sitting and waiting. You need a stool and of course you need a pair of binoculars as well. I've identified a spot where the birds are coming in most often. I've collected a couple of perches. One's a bulrush, that's very nice and photogenic. The other's just a twig. I'm going to put the twig up. I'm not keen on the, the picture but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll try both of them. So I'm going to provide them with two perches. This one I don't particularly like, but we're, we're going to see what it looks like. It's only just slightly higher than the hard rush. And then over here, just a, a little bit of reed mace. Far more natural looking. I've had to put two together and tape them together to make it slightly taller but I don't want it too tall because I don't want the skyline in the background. So we start off by putting the camera in place, we get it to the right height and we check the background. If the background is not quite perfect I can move to the right or, or the left and I get my stall in place and I've got everything lined up. You don't put the hide up first, set the camera up first and get all the settings right. You can judge the image size, you know how big a reed bunting is going to be on that perch. When everything's in place, then we put the hide up on top. It took about 15 minutes before the bird arrived. It landed on exactly the wrong end of the twig, a little bit too low down, so it's in the vegetation. But it only took it about a minute or so to slowly make its way up the twig, so it was uh, out in the open. The perch I really wanted it on was the reed mace and it didn't land there until the following day. I never saw it on the stick again, it much preferred the reed mace and photographically it is far superior. And I'll just finish off with a series of stills pictures that I've taken in the same field over the last few years on different perches that I've provided for the bird. <laughs> 